good afternoon everybody. Now, um, start off by, by saying the, the rather grey black and white photo of me uh, isn't a true reflection of my likeness, because as you'll see I'm actually really quite pink. Um, and actually, as a, as, a, as a fair skinned Brit, you only ever need you know, an hour of sun a month and, and uh, you know, I get a really deep, beautiful purple tan uh, like you see today. Um, but actually, I, I felt that uh, the final slide that, that Nigel put up with this young, young fella at the top of a scary slope was, was actually really quite appropriate for what I want to talk to you about today. Um, and as I thought we were sitting down for lunch, I thought I would sit down with you and uh, please carry on eating whilst I chat. So I, I, I like to think of this as like a, a fireside afternoon chat. The beauty is we've got chairs that you can't slump back and fall asleep in. But if you do feel that you want to have a little nod off later, then I'm, I'm sure there's a comfy chair somewhere in the office that you can, you can retire to. But um, my, my, my job at Google is to uh, oversee our agency business across Europe, Middle East and Africa. Uh, so I travel around all the multi-markets that we, we have. And uh, what's fascinating in doing that is seeing the, very, the really great divide, the digital divide, um, from one country uh, to another, which um, I find fascinating and slightly scary in, in, in many respects. And so what I want to talk about today is sort of three, four, four topics really. One is the market context um, for Belgium, uh, the market context for Google within that and digital within that. Uh, and actually that digital transformation is how you can take that, that the, the different, almost the Belgian paradox that we see um, and leapfrog the present to get to the future uh, and the future where where we see it and I, I see it through clearly uh, biased Google lenses um, although I'm not wearing any today and uh, they're coming shortly um, and and then actually why we're working with Dentsu so well uh, both globally locally regionally um, and what you guys need to do to, to make that leap of faith perhaps um, so the market context is I guess we all believe in marketing and advertising, otherwise we wouldn't be sitting in this room. Um, and if you look at a report recently by Deloitte and the World Federation of Advertisers, they say that, uh, that uh, for every one euro spent um, in, in the European economy, it adds seven euros to the GDP. Um, in the UK, there's a similar study a couple of years ago and said that every pound spent in advertising, it added six pounds to the GDP of the economy. So increasing advertising and being part of advertising and mobilizing marketing is for the good of not just the brands, but for the economy as a whole, which in theory uh, reciprocates back to brands and to consumers. Uh, as Nigel talks about, it is about people. And everything I'll talk about, albeit I'm gonna talk about um, a lot of technical stuff as well, it does re revolve around getting the right people in place in the first place. But let's think about this economy, the digital, Ad economy. Ad economy. Um, the EMEA, or European Stroke EMEA media market, is worth about 140, 150 uh, billion uh, dollars. Um, and overall, it's about 50, this year it's going to be about uh, 50 billion dollars in, in, in digital ad revenues, which across EMEA is going to be between 35 and 40, about probably 37, 38% of all advertising will be spent on digital formats um, this year in, in, across the region. And yet, there is no average. You know, there are massive winners and massive losers in that space. If, for my language, I call someone that's under, under, under investing in digital to be, a, to be behind the curve. If we look at the UK, the UK is a 50% digital market, 10 billion, over 10 billion pounds was spent in, in, on digital advertising, online advertising last year. Uh, and that's for a, an economy which is smaller than the German economy, um, a smaller GDP, a small, about a similar sort of ad market, um, and the, the German market is um, only about 28 to 30% uh, digital. It's still dominated by what I would consider the old politically motivated old guard uh, print guys of Axel Springer, especially, <laughs> especially in, in, in Germany. You look at France, again, um, heavy, heavy TV, heavy print presence, again, struggling to get to 30% digital. 
with the same size population as the UK, but again, massively different in terms of its digital take-up, of its digital perspective. Why are the consumers in, in Germany and France so far behind the UK? If you look at then France, if you look at, sorry, go further south, if you look at Spain and Italy, um, well, they've both got duopolies of television, um, and as a result, they're, 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 ch they're, they're stagnating the rate of change because of the over-dependence uh, by advertisers and the community um, on the duopoly that runs and forces the, the, the pace of change. So the pace of change is slow. They're 20, 25% of their business is digital, and yet the consumers are all online. We heard it earlier about the, the rate of change of the consumer's adoption of digital, um, uh, way ahead of, of perhaps the industry to, to, to stack up. You get to Netherlands, um, and it's again, similar to the UK, about 50% digital market, a really advanced programmatic um, digital environment. Um, and, it's, and actually, uh, from, from my perspective, one of our, our, our really advanced digital markets in the way we're thinking and, and working with advertisers in the, in the general ecosystem. And then you get to Belgium. <laughs> and, there's a, and there's a paradox. The paradox is that the consumers are highly engaged. Um, you've got 100% broadband coverage. You've got 60% of, of, um, of the population are, are, are using e-commerce. Um, but this e-commerce is coming from abroad. You're importing all of your e-commerce. The local markets are, are behind. Um, and, and actually, the, you know, the sophisticated, sophisticated, I can't even see it, say it, the sophisticated consumer is there, but the advertisers are not. Um, it's, it's strong on e-commerce, um, so there's a huge opportunity for Belgium to, to grow its own in-house economy. How's it going to do that? Well, it's not too late to get on board, is what I'm here to say. Uh, it's not too late for you guys to, to leapfrog the present and reach the future. Uh, there is, as Nigel was alluding to, a lot of noise in the market at the moment. There's been a lot of noise this year uh, about brand safety, about um, viewability, about measurement, about uh, actually transparency with programmatic advertising. All these uh, issues are there to sort of um, uh, deflect your, your future plans. Um, so, I'm not going to talk about them today, but I'm happy to talk uh, in the Q&A about anything, uh, uh, any, anything to do with those issues. But for now, um, I think it's time to choose partners. It's time for you guys to choose the right partners, choose the right technology, to choose the way that you want to think about the future. It's time to make some very difficult choices, and one of those difficult choices, I would argue, is about moving your business to the cloud. Now, you might be thinking, you know, what's this media bloke wants to talk to us about the cloud computing? He doesn't know anything about it, and that'd be true. I don't really know much about it, but I'm here to just to stimulate some thinking about it. The cloud for us is um, how you take advantage of the technology, the advantage of machine learning, whether it's for healthcare, whether it's for financial services, whether it's for media, the cloud allows you to navigate and interrogate data pools and information that sits within every one of your organizations that actually humans can't interrogate at the pace of change. Um, and it needs to be the partners you choose to help you go down that route uh, will make a difference to your business over the course of the next 10 years. As Nigel said just a, a few moments ago, we tend to uh, overestimate the present and we underestimate the, the future. But if you're going to get to the future, you actually have to invest in the present. Um, and investment does mean making some, some quite tricky choices. At the heart of digital uh, transformation today, I see the cloud and I see machine learning at that heart. Google um, was a search business. Its mission was to uh, was to navigate the world's information and make it universally accessible to, to all, all comers. We then became a mobile first company. Consumers are going on mobile. The next you know, two billion we talk about uh, consumers going on online will be on mobile devices. We're now uh, 
an AI first company. We're now, we're now into machine learning at the core of what we do. It brings power to customers, it improves security, it improves reliability, it improves data analytics, uh, and it allows us to really navigate the future um, with human inputs. And as your businesses shift uh, online, and as you get more and more consumer interaction, and you get more knowledge from uh, your consumers, more information about those consumers, machine learning and tools that are readily available, and we'll, I'll talk about in just a second, um, will enable you to build better products that your consumers will, will love, uh, and enable you and your workforce to be streamlined, yes, as Nigel said, there may be a change in, in job cultures, um, but able you to move faster. Um, uh, and, a, and, a, and a quote that I love is that it's no longer going to be about the, the big fish eating the small, it is the fast fish that will be eating the slow. And it is about the speed of adoption of this technology uh, and how to use it uh, that is super, super important. Sundar Pichai, our, our, our CEO, uh, recently said that machine learning is a core transformative way by which we at Google are rethinking how we're doing everything. Now is the right moment uh, to invest in these technologies. And, uh, on, on the consumer side, almost everything we do now is based on machine learning, whether it's understanding Gmail, whether it's looking uh, for uh, identifying data within our, around our, our vast data resources, whether it's using in translate or recognizing um, copyright uh, in, in, on, on YouTube, it's, core, it's a core part of our, our business. Um, and in the broader sense, it's what we want to give to everyone. So, you know, we are building tools and creating tools now that enable every customer of ours, uh, whether it be agencies, whether it be clients, to engage in learning machine learning. Um, we're looking at tools uh, like our, uh, our accelerated mobile pages uh, tool, it's AMP. Basically, mobile, as we know, is at the forefront of everything that the consumers are doing. Um, one of the biggest challenges to get, get consumers engaged in mobile is ultimately the speed of learning and the quality of mobile sites. The majority of mobile sites, the majority of advertisers in this room and outside this room is poor. Uh, they're often, too often, the same desktop site just repurposed for mobile and then not built for, um, for the consumer. Accelerated mobile pages enables us to, to really look into the heart of those mobile pages and, and advise customers how to change them, how to make it uh, um, acceptable for the consumer and fast uh, to use. And then um, TensorFlow, I don't know if you've heard of a product called TensorFlow. TensorFlow is basically us outsourcing machine learning uh, to companies. It's a machine learning tool which um, we use internally, but it's open source. And, that, and, lay in, and, and it really will enable you to identify data and information and, uh, and uncover patterns of data and patterns of consumer usage that previously you wouldn't, able to, you wouldn't be able to do. Uh, and by doing that, it enables you to think more broadly about reaching your consumer, as Nigel was talking about. You know, ultimately, it's about reaching consumer in a broad sense, but also in a very narrow, personalized and targeted way, which isn't creepy. Um, because there's a bit too much creepy stuff out there as well. I mean, you need to try and um, uh, break that down. So, have, so perhaps on the broadest sense, uh, I, I encourage you to think about changing the shape of your businesses through the cloud. The use of the cloud, the use of machine learning, the use of technology to uncover data. But then an important, perhaps a more digestible challenge is to, an, an, equally, an equally critical decision is about choosing the right day-to-day -day technology or day-to-day -day technology partner. Okay, I'll be biased in thinking that, that Google can offer you that but equally your technology partner could well be uh, your, your agency of record. And you know we're here to really support and, and, and recommend uh, Dentu Aegis in that respect. Um, what we call this, this transformation of, of use of technology in, sort of in the Northern, Northern Europe is, 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 is managing the ecosystem, by which uh, in simple terms, it's, it's about managing your data activation and automation. Automation 
is crucial in today's world. There is just too much media to navigate personally. I started off this industry um, and I worked for television for 20 years before Google. I've been Google 11 years. The one thing I've noticed is the speed of change at Google compared to the speed of change in television. TV buying when I first started it um, was actually a, was a deep skill because you had to memorize everything and do it, uh, do it by hand. Um, nowadays, TV buying and most other media buying is not a deep skill, but search and digital navigating, planning and buying, I consider to be a really deep cognitive skill because they have to be expert at so many different layers within the business that other broad media do not. Um, and investing in the right partner with the right talent and the right skill sets doesn't come at the same price, perhaps, that you may have uh, attributed to previous media skills. Um, so it's, it's crucial that we understand um, data and automation. It's crucial that we understand measurement and, and cross-channel and cross-platform attribution. Attribution modeling is actually the panacea to making the ROI work for you. You know, last click model that made Google, you know, billions in the early days um, is, 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 you know, way, way gone. And it is about getting the right attribution modeling um, for your consumer, cross-channel, cross-platform. And some of the work that Dentsu have done in that space is, 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 is world-beating. Um, and having the right assets um, is ultimately as crucial. These are things that you can do today, cloud, um, machine, uh, fast tomorrow. But today, having the right assets, that's the right web design, the right web build, the right mobile pages, the right mobile build. Um, and the right creative, the right creative that is relevant for the audience in the, t in the context uh, of, of the placement. I hear so much now from our print, my friends in the print media that you know digital is right, but it's all about context. And you only get context, you know, in a nice big full page ad uh, in, in the Guardian. Well, I'd like to say that's bollocks. You know, to quote my my French. Um, the actually, you know, context in digital is absolutely pertinent and possible uh, and, and easy to do, providing you have the right tools and the right, and the right people to help you and advise you in, in that space. Um, and then lastly, those people are still the humans before the machine, and, which is expert planning uh, and buying. Uh, and the buying may well be programmatic going forward and in present, the buying may well be automated, but the planning still needs uh, individuals and that EQ to understand your business, to understand your brief, understand what you want to achieve and having smart uh, business planners and business partners at your agencies that can, um, that can translate your brief through to an input into either the trading desk or a programmatic buy is essential. You still need smart people at the top of that funnel. Now, much of this sounds like sort of technical skills, but actually it, it, it isn't. You know, we need, still need the deep demands of, of, of human science to get to understand uh, those data. We need a different set of talent. One thing, we, we need humans, but they may be different humans to what you had five years or 10 years ago. Um, and too many clients, I would argue, and even too many agencies still run multiple tech stacks multiple automation uh, 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 programs and are not actually uh, listening to their own teams. One of my biggest challenges to agencies and clients around Europe is about expertise. If you demand of your agency to use multiple platforms, then they will be average. If you demand of your agencies to use single platforms and single stacks, then they will be expert. Ensuring that the partners you choose are, are focusing on fewer rather than multiple tech uh, possibilities enables you to get the most out of them and enables them to be expert at what they do. And expertise in marketing and media today is something that perhaps haven't seen for a number of years, perhaps going back to my, my TV days. Um, we see running single stacks uh, uh, as an improvement of about a third on ROI and a third of an inefficiency, and that's what we want. That's what you want from your from your from your third parties.
the consumers online, so we all have to be. Um, we need to embrace this at speed. And both Google and Dan can help you on this route, which brings me to why we're here today. Um, and I really do want to compliment the team for creating this Now Lab. It's one of the only labs we've got like this anywhere in EMEA. We've, we've played with other ideas in, in other markets, but we've not built something as fixed, as permanent, uh, and, 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 and with such a fantastic program of usage that, 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 we, that I've heard about and we, we see here today. Um, we've got a brilliant and a really strong relationship with Dentsu Aegis uh, globally, locally and, and, and regionally. We've seen them as one of the most invested, as you heard from Nigel, one of the most invested partners in digital um, anywhere in the world. Um, and you know their, their skill sets and their innovation comes from actually both organic growth and um, acquisition. Actually, I, I, I spend many an hour speaking with uh, agencies uh, and specialist agencies who are being bought by networks and then being killed by networks because they don't really understand the specialism and the expertise that these guys have. Uh, I, I honestly say, sitting here, uh, albeit, you know, uh, Dentsu are buying my lunch, but the Dentsu have been, <laughs> Dentsu Aegis have been the one network that has made investments in, in um, digital skills, both organically, but by acquisition, and have really uh, molded those into the fabric of their organization and have changed the, uh, the shape of their organization as a result. From uh, the fantastic office we have in Manchester, and I mentioned Manchester you know, too much in the news in the last few days, but the office in Manchester in the UK is one of the most advanced uh, di digital agencies uh, in, in the UK. Um, I prospect born uh, out of digital, born out of search, is one of the leading lights in, in, in search advertising uh, around the world. The acquisition um, of Merkel uh, just last last year was, was a phenomenal event in, in the industry, probably not heralded as much as it should have been, but the fantastic data and activation uh, insight that they're gonna get for, for Merkel. And, and the fact that Merkel already owned uh, a small digital agency called Periscopics, one of the single best uh, uh, digital agencies in the UK, really enhancing their skills. The same with um, buying, uh, net, buying into, into agencies around, around the world, and even, um, even one here, here locally uh, is um, Net Society, uh, formed by some ex-Googlers. So um, the understanding of, the, of programmatic and customer journeys is the heart of Dentsu's business. The understanding of how that attribution modeling works is at the heart of the business. And, and we've together worked and built, uh, helped them build this, uh, took one of the tools I hope they use with you, called the TV Stack. Um, which ultimately uh, demonstrates the, the ability to, to cross-platform um, look at the, uh, the reach and frequency and, 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 and optimum coverage from TV to online. Uh, it's a brilliant tool. It, it, I think it's the, it's the best, best in the world that I've, that I've seen. Um, and it's something that for our YouTube business we think is actually crucial to get that cross-media uh, attribution right. Um, and I'm really excited to see what we can do future in Now Labs and how I can perhaps export that uh, to other markets if, if, if uh, we can do so. Um, so how do you get on board? I, I say I don't think it's too late to join this party, but it does involve making broader decisions beyond just media. Um, it isn't, it's no longer, you know, as I say, uh, about the big fish eating the small. It is about moving fast. It's about the, the fast fish eating the slow. If, you, if you're slow, you will be overtaken. We're already seeing it um, by so many of the e-commerce players that are big in this market uh, being foreigners. Why do we want that to be the case? We need to invest locally to get ahead of the curve. Um, decisions on choosing your right partners are utterly crucial. And in that, I say those partners could be uh, Dentsu Aegis, it could be Google, it might be a Centura Deloitte um, who, 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 who do an, an overall bigger picture um, cloud play for you. But Nigel would shoot me if I was to encourage that, <laughs> and quite rightly so, because that's exactly where Dentsu can aid and abet your growth. Um, the Belgian ad economy is a, is a healthy ad economy. It's $5 billion. It's the, it's the second biggest ad economy in Northern Europe, and yet uh, with only... In, under 15% digital, it's a digital laggard. So I genuinely 
suggest that if you want to leapfrog that laggard present into uh, an advanced future, going with the cloud, going with machine learning, going with the right partners uh, is the route to go forward. Um, and I implore you to get there fast. Thank you very much. Thank you.